Right, here we go again. So, after messing up the audio on the uh, 502 work in progress video that I had to redo and try and remember everything that I said the first time, I thought, right, let's go to the next video. Couldn't bear to do the uh, Saving Private Rhyme video that I just did last time because um, trying to remember what I said and trying to do it all over again is rather painful. So I skipped to the next one down the list and I can only assume that it's the same person from Mistrock44 sending another video from Shaving Ryan's Privates. What's wrong with Private Jackson? Sniper rifle indeed. Well, as I said in the last video that you now can't watch because I have no sound, the, the sniper rifle stuff is just a bit... Oh, fucking... It's just bollocks, isn't it? There's no other word for it. It didn't make any sense. Uh, half of it wasn't possible. Uh, so, yeah. So I'm hoping this will address the uh, issues with it. But, before we get into that... Did it, did it, did it, did it, breaking news from Baz Dond. Cheap isn't best. Avoid the Patch King. Did it, did it, did it, did it. This video is sponsored by The Patch King. Best creations of World War One to World War Two US patches available on the market for living histories and reenactors. Sold worldwide. Um, no, just joking. I mean, that's just me. It'd be pointless giving myself money, wouldn't it? <sighs> Breaking news from the Patch King. Ignore what B Baz Don says. It's usually bollocks. Right. Anyway, what is wrong with Private Jackson's sniper rifle? Let's have a look. very quiet. He's not playing. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video. You're welcome. On ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and today we're going to take a look at the movie Saving Private Ryan, specifically how the 1903 A4 sniper rifle is portrayed in the hands of Private Jackson in that movie. Now I want to preface this video by saying that I really enjoyed Saving Private Ryan. It's a fantastic movie. There's an incredible Oh yeah, for a, for a film, it was it was groundbreaking. It brought us from uh, the the films of the, you know the sixties and seventies, which were either sort of a comical appearance, like um, Kelly's Heroes, which is basically a Vietnam film set in World War Two, uh, to things you know where all the uniforms are incorrect. The tanks are like post-war Russian tanks with swastikas painted on them here and there, and and stuff like authenticity just didn't matter. And all of a sudden, we're confronted with, you know, Shaving Ryan's Privates, where they hit the beach. I saw it at the cinema just as it came out, and you could feel the tension in the room and the people going, holy shit, what is going on? This isn't a war film. We're there. Uh, and it, it was it was groundbreaking for, for filming. It really was. So, yeah, absolutely, as a film, it's great fun to watch. The storyline is just fucking stupid, and... As we'll look at with a sniper rifle, you know, some of that doesn't make sense as well. But for those who don't know about things like that, it's a it's a fantastic, believable <laughs> story that in, and, and everything looks as realistic as possible. Incredible amount of work that yeah. went into making it realistic yes, and accurate. Absolutely. And there are some fantastic little details in there that most people will never even notice. That absolutely. Are incredibly accurate and period appropriate. But there's also some problems yes. and when i went back and wow such as the beach obstacles which face out to sea when they should point inland uh which is silly mistakes as well sometimes Rewatched it with an eye specifically towards private jackson's sniper rifle uh, it was it was pretty bad yes it is we first yeah. see private jackson on the assault craft heading to omaha beach he's with us for the entirety of the movie and if you notice even in this very first scene he's got a tube over his shoulder yep. That's a scope carrying tube, which is interesting because it tells me whoever put together the uniform and the equipment for Private Jackson definitely put some real thought into what they were doing. Unfortunately, they got it basically <laughs> yes. all wrong. So, yeah. Well, that, I think is if you to Google World War II sniper and then took a screenshot of everything that you saw and then put it into one big impression, you get Private Jackson. Unfortunately, you've got marine snipers, you've got army snipers, you've just got a whole mix of guns, scopes, materials, and it's all just cluster fucked together. When we first see Private Jackson actually using his rifle, it is on the beach to take out a German machine gun nest. Yep. And in that scene, his rifle is a 1903 yep. A4 right. 
set up with a small scope like this. However, unfortunately, what they actually gave him was a rifle that has a Lyman Alaskan scope on it. That was, as we touched on in my video on the O3A4, the Lyman Alaskan was the scope that the that. US military preferred, wanted to have for these rifles, but they weren't actually available. And so they used the Weaver 330 instead. Now, if you look closely at Private Jackson's yeah, rifle, you will see that he has adjustment knobs up here just behind the front scope mount. Yep. That is a Lyman Alaskan. The actual scope, the Weaver 330, has its adjustment knobs. On the top. Let's see it a little better over here. Yeah, we go. Right back here, way at the very back of the scope. So even from the beginning, they've given him the right rifle. Note that the, the front sight is missing, as it is in the movie. That's, nice. that's correct. That's a nice touch. But not the right scope and given the attention to detail and other aspects of the movie i'm not sure why exactly this slipped through the cracks uh now there were lyman alaskans that were retrofitted onto rebuilt o3 a4s after world war ii they did see some use uh in korea although the majority of them went on the vast majority of them uh went on to m1c garand snipers yeah. but you would never have run into one of these rifles with a Lyman Alaskan in the European theater or really anywhere in World War II. So that's our first problem. The next time that we see Private Jackson and his sniper rifle in the movie is where we have probably the biggest factual problem uh, yes. with how it's presented. That's the bell tower scene. So there's a yeah. German sniper up in the bell tower, shoots one of the... Because before he says it, it's not fucking possible to put that scope on that gun just by swapping them over it just doesn't work it's impossible americans private jackson figures out where he is that's where i'd be and estimates the range at 450 yards and decides that the, the scope that he's got on his rifle is insufficient for the task and you know, he's not necessarily wrong on that it's a two and three quarter power scope pretty low magnification and jackson's solution is to go to that that tube i think it's on this shoulder that he's had on his back the whole time yep and by the way, that is a correct, appears to be correct, carrying case for an inertal eight power scope. And he pulls that thing out and sticks it on his rifle. <laughs> now, we have How? like five simultaneous problems here. How? Yeah. Uh, first off, the inertal was Corps. used as a scope on a World War II sniper, but it was the Marine Corps sniper yeah. rifle. And Private Jackson's not a Marine. There weren't any Marines at D Day. Well, that's an interesting picture because, unless it's part of the tree, that looks like the front sight which is kind of weird if you think about it. The biggest amphibious landing uh, that had ever been done, and it didn't have any of the Marine Corps. But that's yeah. a separate issue. They yeah, absolutely. The anyway, uh, there are no Marines there. There are not going to be any Marine Corps sniper rifles there. It's just Private Jackson's yep. standard issue, 1903A4. Uh, the other problem here is that the mounting points for the Unertal yeah, are not the great. same as the, the mounting points for this guy. This has a mounting, a front mounting point up here on the receiver. On the inertal scopes, they actually mount a, a scope mounting block yeah. up here in the middle of the handguard. And the rifles have there you go. basically customized handguards. And that shows exactly why it's not possible. Like this idea that you can just whip it off and put it on. No. No, absolutely not. That are cut away so that they can put a mounting point up on the front end of the rifle. Uh, they're also, for what it's worth, they're also 1903 standard rifles, not 03A4s. So they actually have rear sights on them. Uh, the Marine Corps rifles have front sights on them. Yeah. They're really, uh, I mean, as much as two 1903-based sniper rifles can be different, those are substantially different sniper rifles. Uh, there is, in fact, no way that you can just swap this scope and the Unertal. It, it's physically impossible. And there weren't any Unertals there. So that's our biggest single issue of the movie, I think. Now, let's just accept at this point that, okay, Jackson has new Nurdle eight power scope on his rifle. Fine. Uh, unfortunately, there are a couple more problems with how oh, he showed Oh, yeah. Up. They showed this in the other clip. He's twisting the front of the scope for windage or elevation and that's not what it fucking does at all i think that's where he's going now operating that scope so the very first thing he does with it is he peeks up over over some cover yeah. and uh goes to figure out where the the shot's going to be and adjust his scope to make the shot and what you see him doing is cranking on the the front objective of the scope which is adjustable on the inertal and if you listen you can hear him saying 
two clicks windage. There we go, windage. Well, not the problem windage. is he's not actually adjusting windage. <laughs> what adjusts, what turning the front objective of the scope yeah. does is actually adjust parallax. <laughs> this essentially is oh. an adjustment uh, to allow you to make sure that the reticle and the scope are focused on the same plane. Yes. Because if they're not, then if your eye is off center at all in the scope, the reticle is going to shift and your point of impact is going to change. So it is important, especially on an old school, fully adjustable scope like the Unertle, to set the, the parallax correctly. Yeah. But that's not windage. The windage are the knobs on the yes. top and the side of the scope that are mounted. Well, here it's right there on the Unertle. They're like right over here. Uh, actually, they're on the front mount of the scope. In fact, if you look at this still frame of of the Unertle scope, you can see that it doesn't have a mounting point out in front where a real Unertle would have one, and that's because they have to clutch it onto an O3A4 sniper rifle somehow. Hmm. A bit later on in the film, when we see Jackson doing his own shooting from up in the bell tower, there was an opportunity for the filmmakers to have a really great piece of technically accurate detail. Well, it would have been assuming that the rifle was accurate to this setting, which it's not. But uh, one of the interesting things about the Unertle scopes is in order to isolate them from recoil, because they were relatively early, relatively fragile scopes, they are actually not fixed in their rings. So when you fire a rifle with an inertial scope on it, the scope actually moves forward. I mean, technically it doesn't. What's happening is the rifle moves backward. Inertia tends to hold the scope where it is, and so the result is the scope offsets forward on the rifle. Yeah. Now, on the civilian versions, the competition and hunting versions of these scopes, there was a spring yeah. built into the scope and base system so that the scope would bounce forward and then the spring would push it back into position and reset it for your next shot. When the Marine Corps adopted these scopes on their 1903 A1 snipers, they decided to leave deliberately that spring out. And I think the idea was that it might get fouled or caught on stuff or yeah. it was just extra complexity that they didn't necessarily want. So on the Marine Corps scopes, after each shot, the scope is offset forward and the shooter has to physically pull it back against the stops on the mount to put it back in position to make the next shot. And of course, since this is a scope that is mocked up on a rifle that it's not actually appropriately suited for, it doesn't move. And I mean, at this point, I'm not surprised that it doesn't move, but <laughs> yes. I think it's worth pointing out that that's how the inertial would have worked. And if there was a movie done that did portray a U.S. Marine Corps sniper yeah, with one nice of touch. these scopes on his rifle, that's how you would expect it. Uh, that If they wanted to be right, that's how they would do it. So those are our big primary issues with the rifle. There are a couple others which we don't need to get into in real detail because they're just oopsies. Um, in one scene, the the bolt is actually set for disassembly. That, that safety mm -hmm. flag is lifted all the way up. Uh, in fact, interesting point of order, with a proper uh, weaver scope, yeah. you can't actually do that because that flag won't fit underneath the, the rear lens of the scope that way. Mm -hmm. um, also, of course, Jackson fires more than five rounds without reloading the thing. Yeah, that's okay, what fine, I said in the other one. He just keeps on firing and it's like, hold on a minute. I mean, yeah, you just have to assume that at some point he is uh, loading between scenes or cuts or something kind of a typical movie thing in theory maybe they yeah. cut and edit where he yeah. reloaded it but, uh, those are less technical issues than the big ones so oh and of course uh jackson's left-handed so one of the things that i do yeah. see people complaining about uh when they're talking about the the realism of the movie so jackson's left-handed so he's going to be holding the rifle like this what he does in every scene is he'll fire also, and then he will reach over the gun yeah. and cycle the bolt locks up and when it's empty. Cycle the bolt like this. And you can actually see him. Yeah, if you watch him do that though, it's smooth, it's fluid, it's a nice action. Like he's so familiar with that rifle. So that's a nice touch here is boom, 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 done. That yeah, that's really nice. I'm struggling to do that in no. a couple of scenes. And people wonder, well why didn't he shoot frankly the way that I typically shoot myself, which is to use my front hand, uh my right I'll hand to the right the bolt the sling. so that it's on the same side. And they're Honestly, there are good explanations both ways. Um, if he had been using a shooting sling, which you yeah, do so see him put on in one scene in the movie, this arm... Which is a fucking stupid scene. He's got to shoot a prisoner, what, say, eight metres from himself? 
So he straps his rifle into a secure, a secure fixture so he can aim steadily at a guy that's going to be standing still in front of him. Like, it, it's just completely unnecessary. I mean, it's great that he demonstrates he can do that with the sling, but utterly pointless. Arm would essentially be wrapped up and tied to the rifle, and it's not practical to use it to cycle the bolt. So you would reach over with your left hand as a left-handed shooter. Um, frankly, I see that as less of a substantial issue. Yeah. Um, honestly, it's kind of an interesting thing to see where, yeah, there were left-handed guys who were issued sniper rifles. How did they operate those things? And what Jackson does is a perfectly yeah. legitimate no, it, it's good. way to do it. Uh, U.S. Army snipers in World War II didn't have a whole ton of training. They no, it's, it's, it's not like now where it's this real elite thing, you know, it they were it was just a step up from being awarded a marksman badge you know it's not some super duper really cool funky thing back then you could just shoot better than everybody else um yeah not have had the sort of really detailed in-depth yeah, training exactly. of how to properly like what's the most efficient way to operate the rifle and get it totally ingrained they'd just be shooting the way they'd always normally shot so if jackson exactly. were a kid who grew up shooting left-handed on a farm, reaching over the rifle to cycle the bolt because it was easy without having a scope in the way, and then he just adapts that to a scope and has to struggle with it a little bit once he gets into the army. That pretty well fits. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and yeah, it, it cleared up all that stuff that I was saying in the other video that you can't hear. The whole thing with the scope where he just whips it off and puts new one on, utter fucking nonsense. Two clicks for windage where it's the parallax and nothing to do with windage whatsoever yeah um it does just seem that they you know googled world war ii sniper and just took every little snippet of information they could and just bastardized it into into this character but you know it's still a good film let's let's not forget that and it is it's entertainment at the end of the day anyway super quick one 17 minutes could be a record okay until later